Mr. Katz, it's Ed Orange Bud here. More podium places have been secured within races in the Nike Vaporfly Next% Percent 2 and the Adios Pro 2 over the last couple of years than any other shoes. They're on the feet of all those big Nike and Adidas athletes, probably because they pay them to wear them. Aside from Wilson Kipton, who appears to be sponsored by another brand, but we'll get to that in another video. Of course, it is Coronation Day here in the UK. I'm gonna try and decide which one of these two super shoes should be crowned the king. Thanks for tuning in, people. Today, I'm gonna to try and figure out which is the best. I aim to measure, to evaluate and conclude which is the king of the super shoes. It's gonna be a little bit different to my other reviews. I'm gonna kind of compare each attribute up against each other. Just a quick reminder, both of these shoes have been purchased by me with my own cash. I haven't been sent them by a store, a brand, or a retailer. These are my own pairs that I bought at considerable cost. It kind of makes me a bit sad thinking about it, really. Well, I say cost less than I told my wife I paid for them. I'm going to be testing against the following factors, weight, softness, upper fit, underfoot feel, underfoot width, outsole grip, and lastly, goat level, which is a special attribute that I've come up with. Okay, so first up is going to be weight. 234 grams or 8.3 ounces in my Vaporfly Next% Percent 3 and 9.2 ounces or 261 grams in the Adios Pro 3. So the Vaporfly is a full ounce lighter on foot. It's actually quite noticeable, I have to be honest. If you absolutely have to have the lightest shoe for your race or for your training run or just because you have to say to everyone else you've got the lightest shoe, then you've got to buy this one. Clearly the ghost of Bowerman is speaking to you. A shoe must be three things. Light, comfortable, and it's got to go the distance. So one point for the Vaporfly Next% Percent 3. Now we're talking softness. So the ZoomX material here in the Vaporfly, as you probably have heard, is one of the softest out there. I measured it around about 24 on the Shore A durometer scale. Quite a bit below average. I think the average is about 28. I think you could classify it technically as rather soft. Up against the Light Strike Pro here in the Adios Pro 3. On the Shore A durometer scale, I got a 27. So they're both under average really by a hair, but I'd suggest on foot is where it matters the most. For me, the Adios Pro 3 isn't firmer. It just feels a little different. It's still very, very forgiving. More a sort of rebound type feel where you get a huge amount of squash here in the Zoom X Vaporfly Next% Percent 3. As such, due to the more rebound and sort of consistent sort of feel you get across the Adios Pro 3, I think it's a little bit more stable. Now, I mean, that could be an advantage to you if you want something that's going to be very consistent over a full marathon. Let's not forget these are shoes. You can wear them for whatever you want really if you want to wear the vapor fly down the pub you go for it but i think in terms of softness for me it's gotta be the vapor fly next percent three just feels like it's going to work over a greater distance range it could be great for like a 5k right through to the marathon this one very much feels like it's locked into that sort of marathon distance so another point for the vapor fly next percent three next up i'm talking upper fit Here's where things get a little bit interesting. I am finding the Vaporfly to be extremely generous here in the toe box. Not so much in terms of the length of the shoe, but the height here that you get. There's a lot of excess material for me. It's like a family sized tent, but filled only with a single man. I get that bulge that I always seem to get here around the first eyelids where the tongue's stitched into the upper. The Adios Pro 3 though on foot actually feels much more containing i suppose is a much better grip around the top of my foot it's kind of sleek and form fitting almost compared to the vaporfly i wasn't really sure about the fit of the adios pro 3 upper initially but it's kind of grown on me over time i suppose and in this direct comparison against the vaporfly well there is no comparison maybe a lace swap could benefit the vaporfly next percent three i don't think the perforated laces really do the upper justice so i may switch those out but if we're talking out the box and on foot without any sort of nerdy modifications i think it's got to be the adios pro 3 for the point so i think it's about 2-1 at the moment to the vaporfly 
we're talking underfoot feel now. I've got to be honest, underfoot feel wise, it's much of a muchness between these two big bad midsole gangsters. The Vaporfly has approximately 43 millimeters of stack in the heel in my size and about 36 in the forefoot. And the Adios Pro 3 has practically got the same. I think if you allow for a bit of production variance between these shoes and the fact that we're talking about some very squashy compressive foam, when you actually put the shoes on and stand up in them and sort of put your weight into the shoes i'd actually suggest the drop almost feels negative really seems much lower than like an 8 or a 6.5 millimeters that the company state on their website so i wouldn't really worry too much about it people if you run in these shoes and you can feel that 1.5 millimeter difference then i take my hat off to you so what i'm going to do here is give half a point each to both shoes i've run half marathon races in both of these shoes and i couldn't really feel that 1.5 millimeter difference in the drop. Underfoot width is next. I think if you desire your race shoe to have a little bit more width there underfoot, some more surface area, I mean something like the Alpha Fly is probably going to be the shoe that you use. I think you'll be out of luck actually in both of these models. You can see here in both shoes we have a much wider mid to forefoot area and then they're pretty narrow actually back in the heel. They actually feel very similar in terms of the width distribution. We have around 11.7 centimeters up front in the Vaporfly, up against about 12 centimeters here in the Adios Pro 3. And the Adidas shoe is a touch wider back in the heel too, so it gives it a very slightly wider landing platform. Again, I'm going to give half a point to each of the shoes here. I think if you do want some more stability, then the Adios Pro 3 is the way to go. But it's still not really the widest shoe back in the heel. Not much has changed here really in the Vaporfly 3. It's much of a muchness in the Vaporfly Next% 3 against the 1 and 2. Don't see any reason to really mark it down. It is what it is, so half a point each. So scores right now, 3 points to the Vaporfly Next% 3 and 2 points to the Adios Pro 3. Talking outsoles now, which is the king when it comes to traction. Little test for you here, firstly on some wooden surfaces indoors, a slate surface indoors as well, and some wet concrete slabs outdoors. Now before you say it, who on earth is going to be wearing these shoes running indoors? It's not really going to happen. I'm just trying to show you against some different surfaces here what you could expect. The real test though I guess, certainly in England, is in the rain and running on some concrete there outdoors in the wet, the Vaporfly 3 is by far and away the better of the two shoes. I think the continental rubber that we've got on the Adios Pro 3 is great when it's dry and you're on a smooth surface. If you run in the UK, you'll know there's not much of that around really. So not even close on this one, though sadly I have noticed that the rubber is wearing down pretty fast in my pair of the Vaporfly Next% 3. But the lugs, whilst they're there, they do the job. It could explain, I suppose, some of the recent slips that we've seen in Adidas athletes wearing that Adi Zero Adios Pro 3. There's been quite a few people going down and falling over. I mean, there's good coverage in the Adidas model, but in English conditions, I think it's got to be this one. So my final conclusions for you people. We got the scores of 4 for the Vaporfly Next% 3 and 2 points for the Adios Pro 3. I don't think either of these shoes are as aggressive as their previous iterations. I do think Nike and Adidas have kind of tried to make a shoe that's a little bit more accessible to the masses. Now, that might be great for you, but I just don't really feel that the changes made in the Vaporfly Next% 3 really benefit the shoe all that much. I ran loads of miles in the Vaporfly Next% 2 and the Adios Pro 2 and I think I probably prefer both of those up against the current models. Will I change my mind over time? Well, I have been known to do that. More miles you get into a shoe, perhaps the more experience you have in it, sometimes that can alter the way you think about it. But so far, I don't think that there are steps forward really. Almost like a sideways step. The changes that we saw in the Adios Pro 3 are perhaps a little bit more subtle. Just tuning the shoe, I think, for a wider range of runners. Proving that stability and perhaps trying to get a little bit more mass appeal. The Vaporfly doesn't really feel like it's a new version to me. It's like they didn't know what to change because they had a great formula and wanted to put a new one out so that people would buy it. More a remix than an outright new version. I mean, the window on the sides are a little bit odd. The squared off cutouts on the outsole here is just a debris magnet. I guess at least the rubber and the heel of the shoe is a little bit improved. I still don't see the point of the foam jutting out of the back of the shoe here. Surely it's better to have the foam underfoot if you're going to put it anywhere. So which do I prefer more? I've 
got to go for the Vaporfly Next% Percent 3. Are either of these shoes the greatest of all time? Well, no, I don't think they are. I'm probably leaning slightly towards this one if I'm going to have to give something the crown. So I'll go half a point each here. Final scores, 2.5 to the Adios Pro 3 and 4.5 to the Vaporfly Next% Percent 3. Both are great shoes. I think I'd probably avoid the Vaporfly Next% Percent 3 if you have a low arch. It's certainly going to dig into your foot. I think the Adios Pro 3 is just a bit better if you've got a slightly wider forefoot and probably suits slightly heavier set runners better. Have you run in both of these shoes? What are your opinions? Which would be your choice to give the crown? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Musical interlude today is from Eels from their album Daisies of the Galaxy. Been listening to the track Packing Blankets mainly because I've been packing up stuff here in the shoe sanctuary. I'm moving it up to another room in the house so it's kind of a sad occasion. Lots of memories here of trying to get through a script or beast knocking over shoes. I'll miss this little room, but I need a bit more space to sort of move Ed Bud running shoe reviews forwards. So listening to Packing Blankets, absolutely fantastic track from Eels. Lovely percussive acoustic guitars here. And the drums almost sound like somebody sweeping up this sort of old room that they're going to leave. Reminiscing being a bit sentimental about the fun times that they might have had there. Or perhaps they've had really nasty, horrible times there and they want to leave. But I really like the track and I just put that on for about half an hour as I was slowly moving the hundreds of shoes out of here. Packing Blankets by Eels. Thanks for tuning in, people, and I hope you enjoyed the show. It is a show, after all. It's not just a man holding up a shoe. Because... I think that might be a little bit boring. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications. Also, it really helps out if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.